think back to our Mona Lisa example. We had the entity, the Mona Lisa. We had the entity, Leonardo da Vinci. And then we could make a statement, Leonardo da Vinci is the creator of the Mona Lisa. We had two entities and a relationship between them. And then we could have other entities. We could have the entity, the Louvre. We could have the entity, oil paint. And then we could establish relationships between the Mona Lisa and those other entities. And we could establish as many entities and relationships between them as we wanted. Now, what we're looking at here on the screen is just the metadata record that is about the Mona Lisa that establishes the relationship with the Mona Lisa and all of these other entities. So basically it is a single entity centric view of that universe of entities and relationships. And we can represent that differently. When we talk about structured data, usually, like I said, we're talking about data structured in a database. Now, this isn't a database. What we're looking at on the screen here, this is a spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet just like any spreadsheet application you might care to use. Excel is a common example, of course. What this is, is just a tabular form of representing data in rows and columns and data gets represented in cells. Sometimes though, it's easier to represent a database as a spreadsheet just for readability because it puts everything on a single page. Alternatively, we could represent data in what's called a relational database where there is a primary table that has relationships with other tables. This particular relational database that we're looking at here, or data model for a relational database really, establishes the set of relationships between a single entity, the Mona Lisa for example, and a set of other entities. So in this case, the secondary tables are authority lists. These are the name authorities and subject authorities from the Library of Congress. Uh, the, the subject authorities are the Library of Congress subject headings, which of course we've looked at before. So if we wanted to establish a relational database here that had the creator and subject elements, we could say if you want to choose the name of a creator, you must use this particular controlled vocabulary. If you want to choose a subject, you must use this particular set of subject terms. You can represent the universe of entities and relationships in a more abstract form using an entity relationship diagram, an ER diagram. And the way to read an ER diagram is this. Rectangles are entities, student or class or whatnot. An oval is an attribute. Students, for example, have last names. Students have first names. And a diamond is a relationship. A student enrolls in a class. That's the relationship between those two entities. So we could create a entity relationship diagram like this for the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa was created by Leonardo da Vinci. The Mona Lisa has creation date, whatever the date is. The Mona Lisa has the format oil paint, for example. And again, you can create as large an entity relationship diagram as you want to encompass the universe of entities and relationships that you actually care about. And this is as far as we're going to get into building data models or designing databases. That really is a topic for another course entirely. There are lots of 
courses out there in the world on database design. In fact, I understand that there's a very popular introduction to databases course right here on Coursera that you might be interested in. The important point here is that an entity relationship diagram should look very familiar to you because it really is the same logic as the Dublin Core abstract model. The Dublin Core abstract model, of course, establishes entities and relationships between those entities. The Dublin Core abstract model is a data model for Dublin Core in the same way that an entity relationship diagram is a data model for the entities in a database. The Dublin Core abstract model is essentially an entity relationship diagram for metadata. And now we're going to move on and start looking at the kind of structured data, kinds of structured data for the web that exist and that get used as metadata for entities on the web.